In this pruning video, we'll talk about restoration pruning. Many of our plants get overgrown or leggy, and they may require some restoration pruning. This is ideally done in early spring, and so we want you to watch as we look at some examples. We will focus on Pieris japonica, or Japanese Pieris. Sometimes you have a shrub in your landscape, like this Pieris japonica, or Japanese Andromeda, that gets leggy, and it requires renovation. It requires pruning to do that renovation. Oftentimes they will already have some new growth growing in the bottom next to the trunk, which allows you to actually cut out those long leggy trunks. And this is what we're gonna do here, is we're gonna remove these two long leggy trunks with this uh, electric chainsaw. I'm using an electric chainsaw. It's a rechargeable battery because it's quieter and actually makes less pollution. And I can actually recharge the battery with solar power. So you notice I have removed one of those branches. I removed both of the trucks, the actual leggy stems that were on this particular um, Mountain Andromeda, Japanese Andromeda. And this allows these uh, young shoots that are close to the ground to come and fill in this space and have a much more attractive shrub and, and be less leg. After the Andromeda has been pruned, it's shorter, it's more compact, and it will have a lot of extra uh, stems coming from the trunk. And we've reduced it down and took all the legginess off and uh, created a shrub that will perform much better in this location of the landscape. Here are the tools we use in the restoration pruning project that we just completed. It includes an electric chainsaw with a uh, rechargeable battery, hard hat with uh, both hearing and visual protection, my leather gloves, and a pair of chaps. I also have on a pair of uh, safety toe shoes. These latter pieces are personal protective equipment that are required by OSHA for anyone doing this kind of work with a chainsaw. This particular chainsaw is quieter than a gas-powered chainsaw, so the hearing protection probably wasn't as necessary, but I chose to use it anyway. Here we had a site that has a lots of native mountain laurel and native rhododendron. You notice these plants are getting rather leggy. Were this in a landscape situation, I would consider cutting them back heavily and allowing them to clump up from the base and uh, grow out new shoots and new trunks. But as it's a natural area and part of uh, family property where we don't want to uh, uh, manage these plants quite at that level, I'm going to leave them alone. Now keep in mind when you're dealing with clients that they may prefer to have very tight, compact shrubs and want you to do that in which case you would cut back to about three to six inches, typically in early spring, which may be from mid-March to around the middle of April. Keep in mind also that you need to make sure that there's proper nutrition in the soil once you make those cutbacks and allow the plant to come back because they're gonna be under a lot of stress. You should also know something about the health of the plant particularly the root health. If they're already suffering from various root diseases like Phytophthora, then this is probably not a good idea. You may have to remedy that particular situation before you actually make those pruning cuts. So there are a lot of things you would need to know before you make that decision. Is the plant healthy enough to tolerate those kind of cuts? What kind of temperatures are you projecting to have over the next couple of weeks? Those kind of things are going to be important before you make those cho choices. And again, leggy plants don't necessarily mean bad plants, but it's a choice you've got to make or your client has to make for you. In summary, most 
shrubs will tolerate restoration pruning. And this pruning is what you have seen with the uh, Japanese pieris, where we actually cut it back close to the ground. Deciduous flowering shrubs, both spring and summer flowering, tend to work very well. Many of our evergreen shrubs, like rhododendron, mountain law, hollies, etc., but never use it on conifers. This is not a good idea, and conifers do not produce latent buds. Used for plants that suffer freeze damage in previous winter. This is a very common uh, practice, although removing the entire plant sometimes is a solution. This technique will reduce or eliminate flowers for the first one to three years. So that is a consideration. It should be done prior to leaf emergence. And make sure that the plants are healthy before you do restoration pruning. Sometimes it's used prior to digging and selling plants, such as our roses. <music>